I felt a little, yeah, I felt a little silly. We got up to the chair and I felt a little bit better once I was kind of with the comfortable crowd and we were with some bigger, you know, Iowa Smoky D is a big name, Twiffer's a big name. Like, so it kind of felt more comfortable when we were with them to have the cameraman because now you're with some people that maybe deserve, especially Iowa Smoky D's, maybe deserve to have a camera on them. But <clears throat> um, anyways, they started in with the awards with, I don't know, sauce and beans and but then they got the chicken, and and again, I, my goal was if I could hear my name one time, that would be huge. But my goal really was just to be there, so I wasn't expecting much. I was happy. Normally at a contest, I'm like mad if I don't hear my name, but at this one, I was totally fine. Just the company I was in was a call enough. So, and the Royal, they have a big old projector screen, and then they have the stage. And as he calls off names, it displays each name, you know, 15th place, 14th place. And then once they get those five names, you know, 11 through 15, they display them all together. But we're sitting up there and they call 15th place, put it on the screen. And then for some reason when they called 14th place, 11 through 14 all popped up on the screen. And we all just kind of look over like, and I see Bam Bam's barbecue 11th place. I about freaked out because they called, well, yeah, they called top 15. So it's kind of funny, like I'm up there getting all excited and I'm freaking out and stuff. And we all know that I got the call, but we're all kind of just trying to contain it because the, half the fun is just hearing the name being surprised and going. In 15th place in the chicken category, DeQuayo Barbecue. Come on up, Uh, in 14th place, Beer Meets Grill. In 13th place, Hard Way Barbecue. In 12th place, Dizzy Pig. In 11th place, Bam Bam's Barbecue. In 10th place, Swine Assassin. But yeah, it was pretty, it was kind of anticlimactic that way, but once they once they called the name Bam Bam's Barbecue, everybody stood up and was cheering around us. And it was seriously, I mean, I've won the Grand Championship, a Reserve Grand Championship. I mean, <clears throat> those all were amazing, but getting a ribbon, it, I brought it up here. So like actually getting to bring something home from, from the Royal was pretty sick, especially the Invitational. You know, the Invitational is 100% certified judges and it's the best of the best. And, just to hear your name one time and your first one ever, it was, it was pretty awesome. It was cool to stand up there. I think Darren said he called it a, because you walk across dirt down there in the bottom, so <clears throat> instead of the normal man, I hope you, hope you get a walk today or I hope you get a call today, it was let's all hope we get our feet dirty today. So I thought that was pretty cool. I have to remember that one. So yeah, I got my feet dirty in my first American Royal. What'd you get? 18. Let's go get a Mountain Dew. <laughs> so when you talk about the competition at the Royal, first of all, you have to frame it by understanding that on the invitational side, which is where we were set up, so we're in Motley Q space, old space, in the invitational side of the competition, everyone has won a barbecue championship, and more often than not, they've, they've won many, many barbecue job competitions. So when it comes to the competition at the Royal, everybody's already made it. It's like the all-star game. So, you know, nobody is really, everybody's there to help each other out and have a good time. You know, don't get me wrong, everybody's competitive as hell and they want to win, but, you know, it's, it's almost like they're, you know, open door to whatever you needed. You, you know, you needed some extra rub, wood, you name it, those guys were there for you. And, and you know, after turn ins, after each turn in, you know, a box or, um, you know, 
uh, a wax paper showed up with, you know, the chicken on it, the ribs on Hey, what do you think about my ribs, you know? I think one of the compliments we got was we, we gave our ribs to Smokey D and he goes, we're like, what do you think about the ribs? He's like, tastes like everybody else's ribs. I'm like, all right, well, we know we're in the hunt. <laughs> so yeah, it was an open door policy. And I, I think at that point, like everybody's so accomplished that, you know, there's, there's not much to hide. It's more about having a good time and making sure that, that everybody, you know, has a good turn in. Morning sucks. I just overslept for an hour. So it came out here and the pit was, instead of humming along at 250, it was 110. Because this weather's so cold that it just cools right off fast, so. It's been spending the last half an hour trying to get this thing heated back up so we can finish on time. It will be close. You know, I went in with some confidence for the open, but kind of the same thing happened again. It was even colder. And I remember watching the first season of Pitmasters when Harry Sue fell asleep at the Royal and he woke up an hour late because of the cold. Kind of the same thing happened to me. I couldn't really sleep. I was kind of on a, you know, adrenaline rush still from what had happened at the awards ceremony earlier. I had all my meats prepped, everything was ready to go. And the pressure is kind of off because it was the open and everyone says that the open is kind of a crapshoot just because there's a much, much smaller amount of certified judges. Um, but I still wanted to give it my best shot. So everything was great, everything was timed good. I, I lit the smoker again at two, got everything on. I went and hung out with Tom and Paul of IAB. Um, they were hilarious that night. Came back, um, was spraying meats down, getting everything just kind of dealt with. And about 5.30, I finally felt tired <clears throat> and just decided that I'd start doing my hour nap deal. So I put a couple logs on the fire, sprayed down the meat, laid down. It ended up being about six o'clock by the time I laid down, set my alarm for seven so I could wake up, spray the meat, put on the log. Anyways, I wake up and it looked way too light outside. Just instantly had that freaked out feeling and it ended up being 8.15 in the morning and I flipped. So <clears throat> in that cold weather, the uh, pit doesn't hold up too long. So I usually put my ribs on at 8.30 and I hadn't even prepped my ribs yet. They were trimmed, but the membranes weren't pulled and they weren't seasoned. And in that cold weather, you need to season them like 45 minutes to an hour early just to let them kind of sweat in that seasoning. And so anyways, it was 15 minutes before ribs had to go on and I go outside and my pit is 110 degrees. And so the the reason that's scary is it's not like an oven or anything. When it's 28 degrees outside and you have that much steel to heat up, I can put a bonfire in my fire pit and it's still gonna take, it's still gonna take 30 minutes to an hour to heat that thing up and it did. So I built, I built the fire back up. The meat was way behind the briskets and the pork butts. While the fire was heating up, I just decided to hurry and get in there and do ribs. So trimmed them up, slapped all the seasoning on there, had them on by about 8.50. Um, and ribs were really the only thing that suffered bad in the, uh, in the actual open. The, <clears throat> the brisket and pork actually turned out pretty good. I foiled them a little bit earlier than normal, but they still had a good bark on them. Um, chicken turned out great. I thought the chicken was better that day than it was before when I got to 11th place call, but Tuffy Stone and the, Again, referencing the first season of Pitmasters, it's all about how you handle catastrophe. You know, that's kind of how he summed up barbecue. So I was pretty stoked. I mean, I felt like I was a pretty good cook at that point, just to have that happen and still be able to kind of pull it together, get all four things turned in. And I still finished top 20%. So it, you know, wasn't as good as a finish as the day before. But again, considering the circumstances, 560 teams or something like that finished 103rd so um, but yeah I mean again it was I was pretty happy with it it's amazing like you throw that many people almost 600 teams onto one area and the community surrounding it um, the communities there they, they want to throw a party uh, they want to mix it in with the barbecue and the atmosphere is great everybody's very nice I mean I didn't see anybody fight, argue, anything. It, you know, it's it's all about barbecue and the community and and having a good time. And 
you know, I hope someday, you know, Phoenix has something like that, you know, out here that can incorporate something that special, you know, because a lot of those, I mean, I think that was the 33rd or 34th annual uh, barbecue competition, and it gets bigger every year. So um, I think they did a great job throwing it on, very well organized uh, for having that many teams and to, to, to tailor to that many teams at one time and try to make them happy, it's, it's amazing. If I had to pick one moment from the Royal where I felt like, you know, it epitomized the whole experience, it would have to be Saturday morning. Uh, I was first to bed, so I was first up in the morning. So I'm up early with Cameron, and we're just hanging out by the pit, you know, I'm asking him how the next couple hours are gonna go, what we're gonna do, yada, yada, yada. And of course, like Smokey D comes through between the two trailers, he's like, hey, what are you guys doing? Ah, uh, you know, bullshitting. Okay, well, 9.22, we're doing the ceremonial shot before the turn-in. So, Cam and I go over there, we circle up, and it was like, it was everything you would imagine, like, these guys would do at the American Royal. It's their tradition, so they have um, a guy who's preaching, right? He's given the little pre-turn-in pre prayer which involves you know a, a bottle of gentleman's jack so you got all of these different barbecue teams everybody's in a circle um, you know hats over your heart preach is given the preach everybody's got their shot up ready to go and then they have all these little funny you know add-ons um, where they kind of get some digs in on some other barbecue teams it's, it's proprietary stuff i can't give it away but um yeah man the whole group you know did the shot bam bam hit the mountain dew so he kept it clean and you know it was good luck and then out of that group you know Smokey D's was RGC and then we got a call um, there's some Motley Q guys in the group so yeah that was special that felt like we were a part of something that had some history and uh, you know we just look forward to going back and hopefully being a part of it again